Hi, I'm Minachi Shade. I'm here at the Cannes Film Festival with two young men who's actually here with their first short film at the Cannes Film Festival. They have a body of work between them. Their film here is called Ne Meets, meaning always. It's in the La Cine section, which was earlier called La Cine Fondation for Film School Entry. So it's an FTI film. This is Yudhijit Basu and Pithi Joy Ganguly. Congratulations and thank you, thank so you for much. giving me the time. What does it feel like to be at Khan with your film here? Uh, I'm very happy and uh, when the first time they announced the selection, I was really, really, it was like a dream come true and I'm feeling very relieved that my film got a right place. Wonderful. And you, Prithi Joy? Certainly, it's, it's, it's indeed a you know dream come true and uh, very happy that the film got a platform like this. So we are very thankful to La Cine. Thrilling. And, um, so FTI has had a long history, I think, of films, uh, quite high quality films, which have been to festivals worldwide, including at Cannes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us first a little bit about your film, uh, what were you trying to convey through it and what you what uh, like to share? Well, about? since it's an FTI film, he's like co-writer, but yeah. we couldn't give it on the credit, but he's indeed the co-writer of the film as on the website of Cannes. Yeah. It's my diploma film. And uh, just after my previous short film, Kalsubai, I started, you know, touring around, not with the agenda of making a film, but just to travel no Maharashtra more, because that documentary opened up a lot of Maharashtra to me. Kalsubai. And, Kalsubai. and there I found an article, I don't remember the newspaper, which uh, I think they reported the death of a woman in a village called Garchiroli in Maharashtra during her period. And then I got to know of this practice of putting women in isolation during their menstrual period and that menstruation is such a taboo even today. It's rampant in Maharashtra and Nepal and this uh, practice is called the Gaukar Pratha. Mm -hmm. This was the starting point but of course I was not very interested uh, because it, I felt it will be a very social, socialistic uh, film with a message which I don't like personally. But then slowly as we both you know, talked to each other and jammed about this, this idea kept on haunting us. And then we wanted to make a film about the pandemic. And I found that what we as a human race went through during pandemic, this remarkable experience of being isolated and the COVID infected patients were like untouchables. Right. These women go through every period cycle of their life. How interesting so is that this, connection? Uh, this connection yeah. I thought would, was the artistic inspiration for me to make the film. Marvelous, marvelous. And you Prithi Joy, how, what, uh, what did you bring to this basic idea when you jammed? So, uh, uh, as he told that during uh, filming Kalsubai, he was exposed to rural Maharashtra and when we probed... Both of you guys are from Cal, right? Calcutta? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, when we uh, probe more into it, uh, what we you know, found interesting is a, a, a line, a sentence that, we, that they use, uh, like uh, pre period is a taboo word, they use a sentence touched by a crow. Mm. Yeah. This is I in mean, Marathi. In Marathi. In Marathi. Mm. So the others, shade color, which is like, oh, yeah. yeah, like you're eating cow dung, like yeah, gross, yeah, yeah, yeah. gross, like when you're pregnant, I think. That like, language, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very graphic very and graphic associated and with creepy things, or yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but that sentence horrific. was very, very intriguing. Yes. Just by a crow. Yeah. So it's also there, almost that poetic, starting, but haunting. Almost poetic and haunting, and from there we kind of. Uh, jammed and I mean uh, what uh, we, I mean you know we have been collaborating since 2016 what we always try to do is to bring in more layers in our story and that's when you know we uh, thought of introducing the different myths anecdotes uh, it's about an erstwhile nomadic tribe so that is that is uh, you know how you know it came very organically it's not that you know we thought of introducing something into it but it more of the experiences that he had while you know he was touring uh, Maharashtra, so that's that's how it unfolded. So lovely, I think there are. Um, it's it's clearly, clearly, clearly a film with a huge amount of talent. There's no question. The images in them are very, um, very thought of and very haunting. And they could be. I'm not saying it's studied. It Maybe that you found those images when you went, but they are in editing. They are just images that will haunt me for a very long time and not necessarily only with I mean they're beautiful also but also very resonant mm -hmm. and um, I was wondering uh, what was your approach to this uh, understanding this extremely private thing not only of periods but also of a space with only women it, I've always felt that spaces in the in the world 
where there are only women and no men are they have a very different energy yeah it's also security. liberating in some way yeah, very liberating so can you tell us a little more about how you explored those spaces oh, well i must uh, mention two people here my da anjali mulge she's a marathi mm-hmm. and every time because we were telling a story from the point of view of a woman being a man both of us being men which was difficult so every time i used to you know jam with her especially with the dialogues and what do you exactly feel you know and she used to tell that this what you are writing is not exactly how you feel mm. so there is that aspect and also i feel that when i have traveled to all these places and interacted with women in general in the villages they have a very fascinating aspect to them which is very modern you see i mean they do believe in the taboos they are superstitious but their approach you know toward life is very different from the men of the same village and they have this almost secretive code language that they use Lovely. and so i wanted to create a space because if you uh, 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 google gaukar or period house you won't find the spaces like as we described in the film right. it was my imagination Wonderful. because i i felt i want to create an atmosphere more than try to describe how a gaukar looks because yeah. a gaukar is like any abandoned hut yeah it was more about uh, you know creating a certain atmosphere sure. and my dop rachit pande who has been working with me <coughs> on all the projects job. marvelous job uh, he kind of knows me and he has been he has done a good work i guess and my main brief was to him cinematographically i found that during the pandemic people were dying but nature was becoming more beautiful with less human habitation less human you know activities you could see the blue sky and the and the jungle so fresh that was very haunting that contrast you know Lovely. death and beauty side by mm. side so that was something we i was very keen in exploring Marvelous. through the images uh, could you give us examples of things of how the women looked at things which you felt modern which were different from how the men oh uh, well not right? in this film but in kalsubai i have felt that the way they refer to the deity of kalsubai it's like are ye wo to hamara bachchi jaisa hai Lovely. not like bhagwan yeah 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 i i think i couldn't bring that out in that film that's beautiful because uh, you know of language b- barrier yeah. making a documentary in a language i don't know is way tougher so i tried it in this film i don't know how much it have that in bengali as well in marathi also for example santo karam they say mauli like mauli, mother yeah, like mother. right so it's a they have an intimate kind of, connection yeah, yeah beautiful that's beautiful uh, tell us how you arrived at the imagery because i was also wondering it couldn't be an accidental that these women are mainly nomadic Uh, uh, apart from having this spectacular beautiful tribal no, cl- clothes that they did this uh, wear. dress is not designed actually huh. i chanced upon a nomadic group of women in pune itself so the young generation they are not very aware or interested in the nomadic traditions they only know they are they're moving from one basti to the next but when i was talking to the older women and uh, sending him recordings we understood that they actually were nomads and the dress that they wear which they say that this is a wedding dress it is actually the nomadic dress lovely you know lovely. You, the main difference between a nomadic dress and any tribal wedding dress is the glasses abla. mirrors the mirrors yeah abla work uh-huh. with mirrors so uh, it was the, there's a dream scene in the film uh, where that nomadic uh, you know that three lines of poetry which he has written comes it came more like an image in my head and then i was unable to you know put put it in context Yeah. and then we tried this and that he wrote something and utsav ghosh who did the sound i told him that this is the approach you have to make it little away from reality even the sound of the windmills yeah. i had you know almost sung it to him that it cannot be the windmill sound normally it has to be like a very old instrument moaning Oh beautiful so that was the kind of oh brief, which i think Wonderful. the sound designer has done very nicely. I think yeah so this was the other extraordinary image so you kind of know that you kind of sense the presence of windmills without actually showing one as such yeah. and that gave it a more of a, a almost like a off screen killing yeah, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. You know, it has more potency in a way because you don't actually yeah. see it but tell us your how, how you connected windmills in the film with with this community well again it has nothing to do with this film i because i take photographs i travel a lot both of us he's a little busy than me so he couldn't accompany me on all the travels so when i was traveling i chanced upon various windmills and you know maharashtra the windmills in monsoon is superb mm. i was photographing and i met a windmill guard in charkewadi a Sorry? windmill guard guard okay he's a guard there's okay. a small yeah. room in a windmill farm he is a guard there for 24 hours mostly these people are not from maharashtra they're often from very spots of india and I chatted with him and I came to know of a term in uh, windmill engineering called bird shattering. Oh. So what happens when you set up a windmill and the turbines 
the birds don't know what these blades are yeah mostly the crows they go through them yeah they yeah, go yeah, through yeah, them yeah, yeah, they yeah, die that's true and the slowly slowly the bird community gets to know that you can't go there oh, you will oh. die so you don't hear a bird sound in the windmills but ah. so when the birds go through the blades the blades stop working and the birds die and when i knew about this you know i have been touched by a crow, crow. phrase i kind of in my head found the association that just like the way the windmills once touched by crows stop working these women's lives temporarily stop when they're touched by a crow i mean period so beautiful so beautiful but it's also how you shot them these spaces uh i mean it, it's usually that we have seen i mean you see a lot of images of this cow shed whatever yeah, 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 uh, yeah, where yeah. women are dumped during the period uh, also in this most mo- fairly modern film in a way a uh, great indian kitchen by geo baby mm-hmm. uh, he makes reference to it so it's usually from the outside like a shed some kind of dirty space you see women mm-hmm. go in but this was almost almost kind of entering women's dreams and desires it's very much exploring that space and a kind of intimacy between them i don't mean a physical but in terms of sharing confidences and secrets and discussing yeah. their desires and tell us a little more about that because that was very delicate and uh, beautifully visualized mainly because you know i the film i made before kalsubai and then the film we co-directed kuiro khoji if you look at them what we, does kuiro mean it means fog fog in, in nepali it is fog 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 kuiro not actually it's pronounced as kuhiro kuhiro, kuhiro. oh yeah so, go okay yeah. also in Beng- the bengali one bengali is kuasha so and nepali it's and bengali are very close Lovely. so we have a fascination for white shots but and in kalsubai also we had various landscape white shots but i found that i was feeling very bored with the same thing so first of all i wanted to do something with the human faces close up and i felt that with the discussion with my dop rachit that 1.66 is the right ratio and since the story we were keen to tell it from the point of view of a girl we were sure that we have to be very close to the character and the main focus was to evoke more by showing less mm lovely and the simple technique was be very close mm. that's it i mean lovely. there was not much detail thing but i find it very interesting also that you talk about there's a reference to the unreliability of men and she's waiting for this dream guy <laughs> yeah, yeah. who got sharukh khan one guy there one guy. and he doesn't turn up it could be a destiny it's not that he may have dumped her it's not mm-hmm. terribly clear but i i would like to have your both of you and this i this personally idea. this comes from my own experiences with women uh as in who is unreliable i uh, don't know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah well, the, i mean women often don't trust don't trust men trust men and yeah. uh, trusting doesn't mean that they feel that men are harmful but yeah in various ways uh, i think women have a stronger fabric than men and they are more complex and uh, yeah it's from my own experience and i think this line i don't know he didn't tell me much about this line we never discussed on this line we discussed Would on all other things not on this line so <laughs> tell us know. tell us your your version of how we see this so, idea so uh, you know if if we tell us about you know our fairy tale okay you know uh, the stories that we have heard going, growing up we see a lot of references with you know some prince will come and take you know someone away and this this you know sentiment it's still there i would say i mean the whole birahan waiting Biraha, you know yeah, this yeah. idea such an indian exactly. uh, heightened uh, exactly, idea right exactly mm-hmm. so the sister the elder sister is telling i mean it's almost like you know uh, instructing her sister i mean you know she shouldn't fall for this however you know however our take you know uh, it's not that it's been said this line has been said by the elder sister it's not that it's not our point of view right and also we made that other girl have a scar mm. which is never explained why but i think that evokes that maybe she has been betrayed or gone through an experience and the other girl is trying to live his own life so this line i mean on a serious note was mainly to distinguish between the two women how okay. different they are mm. and how similar they are in their differences so sure. but i thought the uh, uh, most exquisite i don't know if i can sh- share it but maybe i will because it's your film is not a thriller as such <laughs> but there is something so beautiful about this girl when she goes away she whispers in the donkey's ear that was and the, she says uh, don't yeah. forget me oh my goodness it was so beautiful that was please tell me image, about that uh, oh my god i made one 5 minute film as a long take exercise called clouds there we had a cow shit and uh, from there i was having this image a donkey or a mule and a girl going whispering something and going out this was there all the time you know because i keep thinking of images in my mind often it, it just came like that that's that that was like you know we didn't know where to put it in the film but the image was always like that because i think i i really love the eyes of animals especially mute animals they're yeah. very telling yeah. when you go very close and 
there's one film of course that film was not on my mind while making it but in retrospect i think that film has stayed with me uh our hazard balthazar by robert bressel yeah i think of that film has changed my way of looking at animals and also there's a whole eo right uh, from a donkey eo i have well. seen very cool on, on the flight i started watching eo but then i fell asleep <laughs> I say, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean live from a donkey's viewpoint how yeah, cool yeah, yeah, is that um, yes, yes. but you have you want something to share on this idea yes i mean animals and women we we, we you know, i mean we talk a lot on images more in words you know yeah. to be to be very very frank because he's also a photographer so mostly <laughs> we talk in images so i mean he mentioned this image you know way ahead look this is you know really playing on my mind so you know i would really want to shoot this and it was a difficult time you know during the shoot because it was a very small cramped, cramped space but yes. i mean uh, you know fti team you know they did a great job i mean you know putting into you know he could uh, put his imagination into you know uh, the canvas it was and it was uh, the fun. dop was on a handheld camera and i love retakes but in fd we are restricted so we had retake what rehearsals what did you shoot on we shot on digital because yeah. we oh but they no still want to okay. okay they give a restriction of one is how many ratio. takes okay. only two three takes <laughs> Okay. So and you cannot direct a donkey. How will they know how many you shot? There's a person If there with us, are and they are given two guard? cards. There's and a guard. No, there are only two cards given. So once you're done, <gasps> it's like cards? two cards. Two cards given, full. And Wait, wait, two cards meaning for one scene? No, 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 for the entire film. One is to four is the ratio. So it's yeah. a uh, 23 minute film. We can shoot maximum 90 minutes footage. And for my and style I, of filmmaking, I explain the two cards. I didn't get it. Two SD cards. Two SD cards. Uh, That's all. Safe cards. Yeah. That has like you can you know okay. have some GB and some okay. GB. So okay. you are restricted. it's just a discipline which yeah, i yeah, think yeah. it's a good thing helps. it's a good it's thing it's a good Absolutely. thing but for me like the films we made before in kohiro we had very less budget but we retook a lot yeah, yeah, we yeah. are a fond of retakes but here <laughs> we couldn't take more so there were many rehearsals and with the donkey you never know <laughs> you never you know what take a happen. chance yeah. you know these guys are so cool they've been having their own production house and made films way before they actually joined fti from where this film was sent as a film school entry tell us about and they're um, very standard copy paste engineering dropouts so they became artists i love that <laughs> he's not a dropout he's I an engineer are you completed i am okay. a, i am a dropout <laughs> okay yeah. as a true blue <laughs> true blue <laughs> but tell us about how uh, how do you started your company and Having already had made films with your company, mm -hmm. why did you choose to join FTI? What, what did it bring to you? It was simple. After making two films, actually after Sanjeev years, I applied here and there in SRF FTI. FTI was a zero year; they didn't take me. And then we made two short films, and then we had a feature. Uh, didn't Kalsa Bai travel to Oberhausen? Oh, right? what? It won an award. Yes. So Oberhausen is one of the biggest. oldest film festivals It especially for docus and shorts grand prize there and a grand prize there i mean this guy is like modestly sitting here although in his <laughs> very cool prada glasses and natty suit <laughs> for the red carpet and so deservedly so how wonderful is that yeah so then we were actually we were uh, on a feature film writing a feature but we realized two things that we need a little more time to understand what we want to do which i think is very difficult number two we had no financing so for a feature we were financed our own projects which were shots and of course i have filmmakers i admire who are from fti and it's a space that gives you a lot of freedom to understand yourself and to be exposed more to the art in general i think i've learned more of literature and music than cinema in fti so it was a you know a time for myself Wonderful. but again now we are back again, back to where we started you finished with the FTI, done. i'm done right. with fti so we are embarking on our new feature film which hopefully we will be able to shoot next year Too It's thrilling! You have the fun. Oh, you're raising the funding. Oh, you no, have we it. have an Indian producer on board, nice. and uh, if you can get some international producer, good. Otherwise, we'll go ahead. This long. is your chance and can't go <laughs> oh, for it. Oh yes! <laughs> <laughs> But I'm very also very intrigued because um, so FTI has of course had a very long history of having its films at festivals, but specifically at Cannes, mm -hmm. back to back. Uh, Pile Kapadia's Night of Knowing Nothing and Shonat Sen's um, and also Pile's uh, dialogue project Afternoon Clouds. Afternoon Clouds was, also. Uh, oh my goodness. Clouds. and um, ashmita's cat dog cat dog mm -hmm. and also uh, shonak sen's um, shonak is not from fti but he's from jawal that's true sorry i mean because it's docu mm -hmm. uh, to win the best docu so it's lloyd all which is uh, a golden eye for the best documentaries that's astonishing uh, record um tell me what it would give you that you might not have gotten elsewhere of course i i i, I you kind of answered it with literature and music but i was also intrigued because you said you often like to approach 
uh, the reason I'm thinking of it is because Payal once told me in an interview, she likes to also potter around the mountains in mm -hmm. rural Maharashtra, but she likes to collect sounds mm -hmm. and identify what she thinks would be in a good in a film and then look at visuals that would go, which I think yeah. is such a cool way to approach cool way. film because she anyway does a lot of experimental work, but it's wonderful to arrive from another way. Right. But you also spoke of images, uh, music and cinematography uh, inspiring you a lot or leading you to film, for example. Can you tell us a little more See, about your uh, film I music I think uh, both of us are primarily very visual persons and uh, I am very much fond of music. It's my first love, though I can't sing. I am not, I don't know much That's about okay. it, That's but I have yeah. a lot of love for jazz. I recently discovered during the pandemic and an ECM, a label in Germany. What's ECM? Editions of Contemporary Music by Manfred Eicher. It was started in 1960s and they are the ones Godard used to take all the music from. Oh, cool. And I'm very happy that one of the musicians of ECM, Odette Tazur, who is the disciple of Hari Prasad Chaurasia, Ooh. has done the music for our film. Oh, thrilling! Uh, so Bravo. I'm very, very What happy. country is he? He's Israeli, but oh. now he's in New York. So Wonderful. I liked his track. I wrote to him that I need it for my film. He gave it to me. Wonderful. Sure, <laughs> but uh, when to begin with the story, to be very honest, that now we know we want to have a more grip on the narrative, which I think our weakness. Yes. You know, we can think of film in terms of an image and sound, uh, you know, more like a um, series of images that goes in our head. But when it comes to writing down a feature, often you need a stronghold of narrative, which is a little difficult for us. We are trying to write and write, rewrite. But starting point for a film, I think, is a personal experience. Always. Absolutely. Yeah, that's lovely. That's Though lovely. the film might be something very else. Yeah. But the starting point is something which we experienced ourselves. Absolutely. Prithvish, is there anything you're comfortable sharing about the future feature? I'm presuming you're both collaborating. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. only what you're comfortable sharing, is there something you'd like to tell us about? Yes, so uh, this is our debut feature and it will be in our mother tongue, Bengali. At, at last. At Finally. last. <laughs> So uh, it is about a story of a, of a young girl who goes back to her ancestral village in, in search of the lost wedding ring of her mother. Ooh, her mother is nice. dying, so it's like her last wish. So when she goes back, uh, she goes back to a village which is almost stuck in time. It's like a time warp. So she, I think she's making the journey inside her head. I mean, we that much. Beautiful. We yeah, we don't need more. Yeah. We need the less to your poetry. <laughs> this is so lovely. Thank you so much for giving your time. Thank Just you so very, much. very proud of both of you. And have a lovely screening and a great world premiere. Thank Congratulations you so much. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.